Well, I'm not in the middle of nowhere right now. I'm actually under a nice big highway. And this is, we are in search of the Crum Creek Ruins today. I'm here with Random Outdoor Fun. We are having a lot of fun today. This is what, the third or fourth spot we hit today. Hopefully we'll be able to hit one more. So, let's get on our happy little way. All right, here we go. So let nice traffic up there. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, let's go. Uh, I have some info about this place that I will share with you as soon as we get away from all this noise. Crazy. This area has a long and fascinating history involving magnificent mansions, water gardens, dating all the way back to the Pennsylvania's founder, William Penn. Less than 50 years ago, these ruins were part of someone's backyard. The gardens bloomed. There was underwater light in the fountains. Symmetrical patterns swirled in classical shapes. These Italian gardens were nestled into the bank of the Crumb Creek. This is the spot that we know today as the Crumb Ruins. Look at that, gorgeous, gorgeous. In 1764, the Hinkson family settled here. So by the time Ward was born in 1895, his family had deep roots to the area. He studied at U of P and Harvard, served in the army, came back to Delaware County, passed the bar, and in 1927, bought Lytle Coat and renamed it Oak Knoll. Look at this, this is absolutely stunning. Oh, stickers. Lytle Coat was one of three parcels purchased from William Penn in 1861 by Thomas Powell. In 1892, Mrs. James Little named it Lytle Coat. She built the mansion that was described as one of the most attractive mansion and beautiful estates in the area. There's perspective. There's Kathy over there. You see how big they are? This is gorgeous. I can't even begin to imagine what it looked like back in the day. Let me just step down here carefully. And then I'll give you more information on the place. Look at these steps. Hard to believe. Less than 50 years ago, this was still a home. Wow. In 
1927, Little Coat was bought by Edith, renamed Oak Knoll. They had an elaborate estate with a swimming pool, private arboretum, Italian water garden with fountains. Ward's real passion was for flowers, especially orchids. They had six gardeners cultivating hedges, roses, peonies, rhododendrons, and azaleas. Five greenhouses stood here where they grew 12 varieties of orchids, commercially selling about 100,000 a year. That's a lot. This estate was on 32 acres. Stonework. Sorry if I'm jumping a little bit with the video. I'm trying to watch where I'm walking so I don't uh, do anything stupid to my foot, you know. And then it overlooks the creek. The long driveway with a parrot of ornately carved stone at the entrance. The mansion had three floors of tall windows and a high peaked roof, carved banister. You could walk up the steps to the overhanging indoor balcony and the floor to ceiling windows were draped in chiffon and draped their shadows onto a crystal chandelier. Yeah, luxury at its finest. After the children were off to college, Edith died in the fall of 1957. Ward grieved and practiced continuing law and his orchids were sold throughout the country. Just a few years later, the family was forced to move. By the 1980s, the greenhouses were gone. They started construction of a four-lane highway, which is known as the Blue Route now. Ward was still living in the home when the government informed, informed him that the home would be raised. Hickson fought to save the estate, but he lost. He stood with his granddaughter Jane as wrecking crews torn down the home in the gardens. He died a few years later in a home just a few blocks away. Today, you might catch the scent of cherries or magnolias, and you might notice the dark blooms of chocolate vine. You won't find any orchids, nor will you hear the sound of trickling water. You only hear sounds of the busy highway. Just a last look before we leave. It would have been so great to see this place in all of its splendor. It would have been amazing. Got a little bonus footage here. There's a teeny weeny bridge down here. It's gorgeous stone arch. They're in the process of reconstructing it. So it will be preserved for future generations to come. Oh, look how nice that is. Look how nice.
Look at that. Look how nice. They're doing a good job building the back, reconstructing. That's great. Well, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. It was another fun explore with Random Outdoor Fun. Uh, we have a couple of things planned for when the weather breaks a tiny bit. Uh, you won't want to miss them. It's going to be great. Anyhow, um, hope to see you soon. Click that notification bell, babies. Peace, baby.